so it was just requested that we spend maybe a couple of minutes just reflecting on what's going on um, in Palestine and across the world. Uh, just a few kind of thoughts that have been going through my mind um, on how we're responding to the situation that's going on. Uh, the first is what we see is the enemies of Islam are taking our narrative away from us. And so we know that there is truth and we know what is reality. But the way that the enemies have taken this narrative away from us, this narrative of truth, and twisted it completely, has left us across the world from where this is happening. It's left us scared and it's left us sad and feeling helpless. But we need to start by reframing this idea within our own minds that the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to us no matter where we are. It's close to the people who are being oppressed and who are being slaughtered. And it is close to us here as we live thousands and thousands of miles away. So within our minds, we need to reframe a lot of the narratives Things that might seem so scary to us that we're afraid to speak about them. But we need to speak about them so that we can correct how we are supposed to approach situations like this. The most contentious of all of these is, of course, the idea of jihad. Jihad is something that if you speak about it automatically, you're just, people are going to start running away. But as a concept, it's something that we have to believe in. It's something that we can't be afraid to talk about. Whether or not we implement it, how we respond to it, how it is enacted, those are different questions. That's not what we're talking about, the implementation of it. But as a concept within our religion, it's not something that we should shy away from. That's one point. The other is the emotions that come about during a time like this. That we might feel helpless, we might feel sad, we might feel angry, we might feel frustrated. We need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created these emotions within us. And those emotions serve a purpose. And so when those emotions are directed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those emotions carry reward. And when those emotions are used against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and against the religion, then they carry sin. And so sadness that we might be feeling, if it is for the sake of Allah and for the sake of His people, it is something that we are rewarded with. Similarly, anger, when it is for the sake of Allah and for the sake of His people, then that anger is rewarded. And so these emotions are not something that we should, that we shouldn't allow them to overtake us, but we should utilize these emotions so that it puts us forth to do action for the sake of Allah and His Messenger and His religion. And then, maybe just the last point that I'll touch on, is this idea that we have adopted within our communities that our success is in material success. Our success is in material power. Our success is in material means. We have hear this over and over and over again, that we have also spiritual success and spiritual power and spiritual means. But we also need to understand, at a very personal and individual level, that there are also ways of personal oppression that are based in the spiritual. There are ways of personal, spiritual diseases that have consequences to other people. And so if we are sitting here and we are not taking into account our spiritual losses, our sins that we are committing in the privacy of our homes, in the privacy of the nights, when we think that no one is being affected by them. We have lost what it means to understand the spiritual world 
and what Islam teaches. So our sins, we need to view them as being the direct cause of the suffering of people other than us. So the children and the women and the elderly that are being oppressed and killed and tortured do not blame some external power. Do not blame some politics or some government. Look within your own soul and see what sin am I committing that is causing the oppression that is taking place over there. And the way to overcome this is to truly dedicate ourselves truly and sincerely dedicate ourselves that if we want to see change within ourselves if we want to see change across the globe if we want to see muslims begin to rise again we need to be the ones who rise in the middle of the nights praying to allah one of our teachers said if a billion muslims are standing up every single night in prayer there is no chance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn that dua away. You are one in that billion. If you are not doing that every single night, not just once, not just on a Thursday night, not just on a Friday, not just when you feel good, not just when you hear a talk, not just when you see a video. Every single night. And you stick with it without giving up hope on it. You and the other 999,999,999 people along with you, that is what is going to change the suffering and the oppression of the Muslims. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq, we ask him for taysir, we ask him to end the suffering and the plight of our Muslim brothers and sisters, our fathers and our mothers, our, our sons and our daughters in Palestine, in Afghanistan, in Kashmir, in India, in China and across the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring his mercy to us quickly and to ease all of our sufferings and to make it so that we come out of this stronger and without any pain and without any hurt. I mean, aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah al-azim, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa an, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk al-fatiha. Allahumma aghfir lil muslimin wa al muslimat, warham il muslimin wa al muslimat, wa barik fi il muslimin wa al muslimat, wahdi il muslimin wa al muslimat, اللهم ارحم أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك في أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واهد أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وانصر أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انصر إخواننا في غزة يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم نصرا عزيزا مؤزرا تعز به الدين وتدل به راية الشرك والمشركين اللهم انصرهم من فوقهم ومن تحتهم ومن بين أيديهم ومن خلفهم وعن أيمانهم وعن شمائلهم يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظهم يا رب العالمين اللهم خفف عنهم يا رب العالمين اللهم قف هذه الحرب الظالمة عنهم يا رب العالمين اللهم عن بعيد عنهم الأذى يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقهم الأمن والأمان يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضاهم اللهم اشف مرضاهم وداوي جرحاهم وارحم موتاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم فحرر أرضهم يا رب العالمين اللهم حرر كل أرض فلسطين وحرر القدس الشريفة يا رب العالمين اللهم افعل هذا عاجلا يا الله اللهم افعل هذا عاجلا يا الله اللهم عجل بنصرهم يا رب العالمين اللهم إنهم جياع فأطعمهم وإنهم قليلون فكثرهم وإنهم عراة فكسهم يا رب العالمين اللهم إنهم خائفون فأمنهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم كلهم وليا ومعينا ومؤيدا وسلطانا نصيرا كفى بك وليا وكفى بك نصيرا إنك على ما تشاء قدير وبالإجابة جدير وأنت نعم المولى ونعم النصير برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين آمين الحمد